and it's good to be here. I want to give an, an up a report. Um, we we know we talk it and we uh, have uh, read in in, uh, in Acts. I'm trying not to speak Russian. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of. Uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> We read in the book of Acts, and uh, when they when they would come after Paul and they did their journeys, they'd come back to the church, and then we report, you right. know, what the Lord did, how, you know, what what the Lord brought us through, what the Lord's doing, and and they gave a report. And so on the way here, I'm like, you know, this is this is this is Acts in action, amen. Right. And uh, and so we we are coming back. We wanted to let you know what's going on. Uh, the last time I was here was uh, 11 months ago, um, the beginning of December. And um, it's, it's, it's flown by. A lot has changed since then. Uh, the war is still going on. We don't see no end to it. And they're telling us to prepare for a long term. Um, and so we're, everything, everybody's getting ready for winter. Last winter, if you remember, we, we had a rough winter. They hit our, our election, electricity uh, infrastructure, uh, some gas fields. And so we were, it was a rough winter. And so people are now, they're saying, get, get prepared. So people are getting, and we are too. We, we, in our house now, we set up this, this fall. A man in the church, uh, he, he uh, has a lot of connections in the city. He knows a lot of people. And, uh, and so one guy said, yeah, we can help you. We'll set up a, it's two big, like, bus batteries. Um, and they, and that's like a, it gives me, it will give us light for several days. If the lights go out. Uh, it will keep the furnace going so the house will be warm and it will keep some, some lighting so we can see what's going on. And so that's, that's a blessing. So we're preparing. And uh, so we're, we're uh, not sure what's going to happen, but we're, hey, we're ready if, that th if something does happen. Um, the different ministries, I want to let you know what's going on. Um, those that don't, don't know how everything started. Uh, people say, you know, how did the, how did the soup, soup kitchen or the, wheels on, the meals on wheels, how did that all get started? And uh, if, if you've heard this, then you just, you just tone out and think about something else. Uh, if, if you haven't heard, uh, let me just share with you. Uh, the beginning of the war started uh, February 24th in Ukraine. This, today is the 601st day. Um, and we, um, it was supposed to go three days. That's what they were expecting. And then the Ukrainian people rose up and said, we want our freedom. And the president said, to America that said, you have a plane, we can take you out. He said, no, send us rockets. I'm staying with my people. Uh, Putin didn't expect that, and he didn't expect the people to rise up. And uh, the people did, and the people are now, from the beginning until now, people, I mean, it's the, the, the Ukrainians are helping the Ukrainian soldiers on the front uh, to stay in the fight. Um, and it's, it's amazing. It's interesting. I look at, at the beginning um, was, I'd never seen that before there, just the unity that the war brought. Um, people, when we first started filling up sandbags, um, you know, everybody was leaving uh, because of the, the war and evacuation and kids and wives and, um, and our people in our church, we, almost everybody left. We had six people that, that stayed. And, uh, you know, we... Lord, what do you want us to do? I mean, they, people are saying, you're American. This is the worst place for you to be at. You need to leave because you, that's, you're, you're like, uh, um, like a ransom or they can use you and you need to leave. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna, we're going to pray about it and see what the Lord wants us to do. And so we prayed and the Lord said, I called you here. Not just when things are good. I called you here when the time of war, I want you to stay here. I said, Okay. I said, I told you when I came, I, you know, I could die for you, and I'm willing to do that. I guess now is the time. <laughs> and so I said, okay. I said, okay, Lord, I'll stay. And I told our people, I said, Lord told me, gave me peace about it, and we're staying. And they said, why? And I said, because God wants me to stay. Right. And others, they said, well, we're leaving. I said, you do what God wants you to do. Don't do what you want to do, what God wants. You pray about it. If he wants you to leave, you follow his leading. But this is what God wants me to do and, I, and my family. And so we stayed. And uh, I'll never regret it. Even if something happens, to, you know, when we go back, I'll never regret it. Uh, I've seen God do so many things. And I would never have seen that if I, will, if I left. And, uh, but I, I thank him so much. But it started with sandbags. That's... Uh, 
everybody's, you know, leaving and what, what are we going to do? We need to prepare, you know, and, and uh, we heard about about five miles from my house down by the, by the beach area. The people are gathering to load up sandbags and they're taking them to other places in the city to the, like, uh, like uh, outposts kind of for, where they're going to protect and set up military and because uh, we were totally not prepared. And I think that was a little bit of Russian influence and the leaders that were kind of in our city at that time, they were kind of rushing back thinking Putin would take over and, you know, don't bomb anything, Odessa's yours, kind of, you know, just don't. And so Odessa had, I mean, there was nothing in Odessa to stop anybody. And it wasn't until the week after the war began, the president kicked out the head of our region, you're out, we're getting a, a military guy in because we need Odessa. And that's when everything started. We need help. Everybody was gathering together. We took out the van seats. I said, hey, we can use our van. We can haul us, you know, sand. They said, come on down. And so we began hauling sandbags and uh, did that from morning till night. We, get in, we got into military places. Uh, they said, you know you're not supposed to say anything about what's here and who's here. I said, I won't say a word. <laughs> won't say a word. Uh, but they, they said, uh, thank you for the sand and for doing this. And, and we were able to start passing out tracks Amen. to soldiers. And I said, hey, can I, can I pray for you all? And they said, you know what? Yeah. They'd gather together and we pray together. And I'd pray for them. God would protect them. I told them who I was. I said, you know, if you need anything, you give me a call. We're, we're here for you. And uh, all over our city. And so we met a lot of people through the sandbags. We've hauled over 60 tons of sand, if you, you can imagine that. From day until night, I mean, we, we would haul all over our city. The vans, you know, we're driving. The wheels are kind of <laughs> almost coming off the, off the ground. I mean, we're, we're loaded. And uh, we'd, we'd do that from morning till night for about almost a month we did that. And then it was through one of those connections at one of these military places, a lady came up. She goes, I'm the, I'm, I'm the doctor the nurse, I'm the cook, I'm the janitor, I'm everything here. I need help. Can you help me with some mops and some brooms? And I said, you make a list, we'll, we'll try to help you. And so she wrote me a list. It was some cleaning things and pots and pans. And, and so we gathered together and we gave it to her. And she says, you know what, I have a friend, which is Odessa. That's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And she says, I have a friend. And I said, well, what's your friend do? And she says, he's a cook and he cooks for the military. And he has a lot of leftover food. He says, could you use something like that? I said, yeah, I think we can. I told the Lord when, when it started, when he said leave, when he said others to leave, and for me to say, I said, Lord, then you open the doors and we'll walk through them. Yeah. And that was a door. I thought, well, that's a door. Amen? That's a door opening. And then another way to serve and to share the gospel. I said, yeah, we can do that. And so we started. We grabbed, he said, bring some totes, some plastic totes, about 10-gallon drums kind of. And you bring them, we'll fill them, and then each day you come. I said, well, I need to plan. How, how long can we plan on this? He says, as long as the war is going, you'll have food. Wow. I said, okay. Amen. Uh, what I didn't know is that is a lot of food they've been giving. And there's no way we could make that amount of food and no way we could pay for that amount of food sure. for this year and a half. I mean, it's, it's thousands of dollars a month just for food. And then you need time to make all of this stuff. And they, they have cooks that make it, bring it, and they just, it's here. And we're like, praise the Lord. And so we began to pass that out to, to different uh, church members. We knew where they lived. And we said, okay, we're bringing you food, and then tell your neighbors. And so their neighbors start coming. And then, and then at those places, we were passing out tracts. And, you know, people were saying, you know, who are you? And why are you doing this? And then we began to tell them about who we are. We began to tell them. And preach the gospel to them, and then now it's they themselves. When new people come, they're saying, "Hey, hey, hey, put your pots and stuff down. We're going to listen to the word first, <laughs> and then we're going to eat." <laughs> and so now, now they they all know. They all know that to get first, we're going to we're, we're going to hear the word of God, and then we're going to get food. And uh, so that's what we've been doing for the last year and a half. And uh, there's been a lot of them people now saved. And some of them now are coming to the church. Our church is almost full every Sunday. Uh, visitors and people coming. We've those that have been saved now are coming to church more regularly. Now they're they're studying the Word of God. We've baptized seven already in the church, and they're they're wanting to get get busy. They, hey, we want to serve. What can we do to help? And so God is really blessing uh, through this Meals on Wheels, and we're going all over our city uh, every night. It's it, it's an everyday thing. I mean, it's. Lord, give us strength, because every day from 4 to 10 at night, 
That's when we pick up the food, and that's when I get home. That's every day. Uh, people are saying, every day? Every day. And, uh, and they give us food, and we pass it out. We go uh, two days a week. It used to be every, every day we'd go around the different places, but then there's so many people. We don't have enough food for everybody to do it every, you know, their, their place every day. So now we've broken it up. We go to two places. They get food two times a week. Um, and that's the center of town, then the outside, the outskirts, we call it the west side, and then the south side. And so every, every Sunday and Wednesday, it's at one place. Every Tuesday, Friday, it's at another place. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is on the west side of town. That's the, the bigger area, more people. And so we do that three times a week. And uh, because of that, now, because of people now getting saved from the west side, we have a van coming. Their own, one of the, the ladies we have in front of her, her house is what we do, the feeding. Uh, her, she's been saved. Now her, her children are now involved in the Sunday schools. And now her husband's unsaved still, but pray for him. Uh, he comes. He says, hey, I have a van. I can bring, instead of you having to come out here all the time, I'll just bring him Sunday. I'll just bring him in my van. Amen. I say, hey, okay, you can do that. <laughs> and so he, he's bringing in the people. Uh, and he's have a, he has a full van usually all the time. Um, and so praise the Lord. The west side, they said, have you ever thought about starting a church out in our area so we wouldn't have to drive so far? And I said, you know what? We've been praying for that for a long time. And I said, if uh, the Lord allows when this war ends, uh, we would love to start a church out in your area. And so be in prayer, be in prayer about that. We have about 20 people uh, in that area that come, come off and on to the church. And so there's a good base there already, those that have been saved. Some of them now are wanting to get baptized. So it's, the Lord's really blessing that. And so, and then, and then in the other areas, uh, we have a lot of people uh, that we'd be able to share the gospel to. Just this last week, we sat down in one of them, and I said, tell me about, about before the war. What was your attitude towards God and church? And, and almost every one of them said, we had no idea. We didn't know anything about God. We didn't want to, want to know anything about God. We were busy in our families and our work. We... We knew nothing about what is salvation, from what sure. salvation, who saves. I mean, we knew nothing. They said, but now we do. Amen. And thanks to you. I said, no, no, thanks to him. Yeah. He's, he's the one that gave us this ministry. He's the one that sent us to you. It all goes to him. And, uh, but praise the Lord. God's doing a great work through that. Amen. The meals on wheels. So keep praying for that. Uh, God would continue to pray uh, that God would bring, continue to bring, give him, bring the food. Uh, they would continue to give it to us. Um, that's uh, it's a miracle, just, just that ministry. Then the pretty ministry, that's, that's been a miracle too. Those that don't know, we had a pretty ministry since 94. We started with a risograph and a computer and risograph. We printed tracks and then um, moved into, we have a, a bigger press um, and a, 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 a organizer and then a stapler system. And so we were pr producing tracks, but at a very small scale. Now that I know, <laughs> very small scale, <laughs> but it was a lot for us at that time. Yeah. But uh, since the war began, my printer, uh, Brother Volva, he left with his family, uh, and I had no printer. The printing ministry came to a halt. I said, Lord, we need, we need tracks. Um, how are we going to get these? Uh, getting them from a, across the, the ocean from here is very expensive. Had a lot of weight, a lot of time. And, uh, and so I remembered we had a printer that printed for us. They didn't know, no correlating, no stapling, no get, bring the, it was just sheets of paper. They would print it and then give it to us, and then we would do all that. And I, I called them, I said, hey, would you, would you be willing to uh, put this stuff together, correlate it, stamp it, cut it, and so we'd have this track. That's what we've been doing, but we can't, I, I, my printer left, I, I can't do it. Would you be able to do that? He said, let's try it. He said, because if, if, if we don't do your orders, I'm going to have to close my shop because we have no orders. Back in the beginning of the war, there was nobody was printing. Yeah. And uh, he said, let me try it. And so he, they printed it, and they cut it, and they stapled it, and they, hey, that looks the same. I said, how many can you do? He says, as many as you want. <laughs> I said, well, you get ready. <laughs> and so we made our first order of 10,000. Uh, uh, if you've seen those, they're called Chick Tracks, the comics. And uh, we're their distributor in, in West West. Uh, West Europe, we distribute, is, is the people or come to us, orders, and we send it to them. Um, I called them, I said, because of the war, people financially are not able to buy tracks. Um, would, could you, could you kind of waive that royalty uh, so we wouldn't have to pay whatever we print, we can hand out free? 
he says, let me get back with you. And they called back and they said, yeah, you do that. Amen. You don't have to pay anything. You just print as money as you want and pass out as many as you want. And I Amen. said, okay, that's what we're going to do. And we started with 10000 and then another 10000 And then uh, word started getting around. We don't know. Uh, we have one friend of ours. He's a missionary pastor up in northwest Ukraine, and we were sh shipping him tracks. And he, he does like a, a round trip each year around Ukraine, preaching and passing out tracks. Well, he must have started telling people, and um, because people start calling, say, "We hear you have tracks. We have. We want to tell people. We want to evangelize. We see the need, but we have nothing. Can you help us?" I said, "Give me your address, your number, and it'll be in the mail." And uh, they did it, and they began, and and the word got around, and now every week we have five to six orders, and we're we're sending out anywhere from from twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand tracks. Um, it's, it's amazing what God is doing. We, we've never produced this amount, and uh, we're just seeing how God just has just blessed this. Um, and uh, right now we're at about 3.2 million in this, in this year and a half. And, it's, I, and it's, we've never printed that amount in the whole time I've been there. Uh, it's, been, it's just awesome. And uh, seeing those orders and hearing, hearing all of the different villages, the city, people calling, hey, we're... we're and they're now sending pictures of them. They're out on the streets passing out tracts and witnessing the people. It's amazing uh, how the word of God is getting out through, through Odessa, through the, the, the printing ministry. Uh, the printers, and they, they now have, they've printed everything of our, all of our tracts. We've ordered everything through them. And uh, they said, because of you, we're in business. So your, your priority, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want, we print in, in the amount. And so that's a, it's a given. And they... And they even, they'll, they'll call and they say, you know what, the paper is getting, getting low and uh, it's getting kind of hard. You better make a, a bigger order um, and we can get it at a, a cheaper price. If you, if you give it to us now, we can order it. And they, they're now helping us to be able to pay less. And so that's been a blessing. And uh, the, the, they told us, they said, you know what, we've, we've read all of your stuff. We, we like it. Can, can we come and visit your church? I said, yeah. It's, <laughs> doors are open. Come on in. And uh, so we're waiting for them to come. But uh, his name is Roma. Uh, and he has been such a help to me. Um, he'll, he'll take stuff. I'll, give, I'll, I'll say, Roma, we, I have this track, and I don't have a PDF for it. Can you help me with it? And he says, we can do it. We can do it. And he'll take it. And then within the next couple hours, he'll call back. He says, I got it. We can do it. And, and he'll, he'll, he'll print it out. And uh, he'll say, how many do you need? What kind of answers, a, uh, addresses do you need on the back? And, and he'll print them out. And uh, it's just amazing, amazing how God has, has used unbelievers for his, for his glory and getting his word out. It's awesome. And uh, that's the pretty ministry. Um, let's see, what else, what else do we do? We have the, 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 uh, the uh, Meals on Wheels, the pretty ministry. The church is doing really well. Uh, a lot of visitors, a lot of souls being saved. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of young, uh, we have a young family, Alexei and his wife, uh, Natasha. She's an eye doctor. He's a IT uh, guy works for an American uh, insurance company uh, doing something and uh, he came about a year ago yeah a little over a year ago and he uh, he said I, you probably don't remember me I was here 18 years ago I said you know what I, I don't for some reason I don't remember you <laughs> he says I was just a young kid that came with my dad we were having problems and uh, you prayed with us told us told us what the Bible says and what we needed to do at that time I said I I don't need to do that. And, I, and I, I, I told my dad, I'm not going back. And his dad said, no, we need to go back. We, we, we need the help. And he said, no, we don't need it. And he, and he said, I, I left. And he says, it took 18 years for God to get a hold of me. Well. And someone, someone told him about the Lord again, and, and he got saved. Amen. And he says, I began to, to tell my wife. And War started in, in February 24th. My wife in, in March accepted Christ as her Savior. Amen. And we're looking for a church. And I remembered you, and I remembered how God used you in my life, and I rejected it. And I want to go back to that church. And he said, I don't know where you were at. I didn't know how to find you. And I we did, began to pray. You know, how can we find this, this, this mark in this church there? And, and uh, come to find out, in 2017... Um, Yula, uh, one of the ladies in our church, had cancer, and people were gathering money for her, and, and somebody in his office um, told him about this, and so she, he began to find out, you know, what, 
what is this girl, where she's from, and we went to her site, and it says here, Mayak Baptist Church, which is Lighthouse Baptist Church, and you know, who's the pastor, and hey, that's Mark. That's, that's the guy I'm looking for. She goes to his church, and, and, and so he got a hold and found out through, through that, that channel about us, and he says, it took me a long time to come. He said, every time I'd get ready, just something would stop me, and I'd say, no, no, I bet not, not right now. And his wife said, I don't know how many times he said, okay, let's get ready. Sunday, we're going to church. And then Sunday come around, and he says, no, we're not going to go today. And she said, I don't know how many times. And then the anniversary Sunday of this last year we had, and, and, uh, and they knew about it, and they, they said, we were going to come. And again, he said, no, we're not going to go today. And I don't know why. He says, I don't know why. I didn't, just something that just kept hindering me for coming. But he said, the next Sunday, I said, that's it. Yes is yes, and we're going to go. And that's when they came. And they came, and uh, we met, and he told me, that's, he says, you don't know me, but I know you, and we're here, and we're looking for a church, and we're gonna, we came to your church. And I said, great, glad to, to meet you again. I don't remember, bud, but hey, you're welcome. Come sit down, listen. If you have any questions, let me know. And then they, that was the first Sunday, and they haven't missed a Sunday since. Amen. And they got, they got baptized last fall. And he's my right hand, one of my right hand men right now. He's involved in the uh, sound system in the back. He does all of that because he knows all the computer stuff. And, and uh, he is such, he wouldn't want me to say this. And he probably will, if, he's, if he watches. He, but he, the Lord has used him to help a lot of people. Amen. Uh, he, they, they are very well, uh, they, have, they have a lot. Uh, they're well, well, well off. And uh, he'll come up and he said, Pastor, I see a need. He said, I want you to give them this envelope and tell them it's from the church. I don't want them to know it's from me, but I want, I want God to be glorified through it. And would you just give it to them? And I said, yeah. Great. I mean, he's, I mean it's, it's a lot. And I said, you sure? He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. He said, remember, remember when you, you preached about when God, how he, when he forgives and how he loves, he does it extremely? I said, yeah. He goes, I want to love extremely. I said, Okay, brother, that's a con you're convicted me now, <laughs> and uh, he he does he does, and uh, Lord keeps blessing him and blessing him and blessing him, and he keeps loving extremely, and uh, it's awesome, it's awesome to see God just changing, changing their hearts, their lives, and and them just doing doing a, doing a lot for the Lord right now. Praise and the church is doing well. Um, the men are doing doing the work right now. Um, Sasha, Alexander, and Mark, uh, that's my namesake. I, he was named after me when he was just a little, little, little kid, and now he's grown up and in church, got married, and, and uh, he's helping me, and, um, and he's, he's doing a great job. Uh, Alexander, is, is, uh, he's had some teeth problems. He had 10 surgeries in the last, uh, last six months, and just, just infection. Then they found out they had, I um, forget what they call that, but he had a lot of... Uh, swollen and infection and they had to drain they had to make holes i mean it was, it was awful and then and then it wouldn't heal and so they had to go back in and do the operation again to heal it and uh, this is the tenth the tenth operation and they started something new um something with the blood and plasma and they put it on there and and they said it's starting to close and so pray for him alexander is his name so that everything would close up and that he would get uh, back to normal but he's been through a, a lot but uh, he's also been a great, great help. Um, the, um, um, let's see, what else? Um, boy, there's so much that has, that's been happening. I mean, there's, let me just share a couple blessings. I mean, just some miracles. Do you mind? About, about four months ago, we were out passing out food like usual, and we got a call, and this young lady uh, said, um, she says, um, I just wanted to call and tell you thank you. And I could tell she's just kind of crying. And, and I said, this is, I'm just behind the wheel right now. I can't talk. Let me give you the phone to Alexander. He's here. And, and she began to, to talk with her. And he'd, he'd go, really? Wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. And I was like, what is going on? And then uh, we found out and that she was on a bridge in West Ukraine and was getting ready to kill herself. 
She said, I had so many problems, I didn't see the, 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 the reason for living, and she wanted to kill herself. And as she was standing there on that bridge, she looked, and there was a piece of paper flying, and she reached down to pick it up, and it was our track on what is after death. She said, I read it, and I said, I don't want to die. Yeah. And she said, I just wanted to call you, let you know, thank you for the track. And is there somebody close by that could help me? I said, well, where are you at? And she told me, it was in West Ukraine. I said, there's a, yeah, there's a preacher friend of mine. He's not too far away from me in Zhitomir. I said, I'll give you his number. You call him, and he'll, he'll we'll see if he can help you. And, and uh, so she called, and they, they talked, and praise the Lord. I mean, that's, that's a miracle. Um, how God used a track just blowing in the, in, 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 on, the, on, the, on the bridge. How it got there, we have no idea. But it got there, and God used it to save her life. Amen. Isn't that amazing? That is awesome. And uh, the, 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 wheels, the Meals on Wheels, that's, that, that has been so many, so many blessings, um, just seeing God's hand. You ever hear the phrase, God's work done God's way will always have God's provision? Yeah. Yeah, I believe it was Jim Elliott said that. And um, that is so true. Um, God gave us this ministry. God gave us the strength to fulfill and do this ministry. And when we have seen him take care of his ministry, and people say, thank you, Pastor Mark and Sasha, for feeding. We said, no, 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 no. This word, word no. I mean, that, you, all to him. He, he gave the ministry. He gives to the ministry. And it's all from him. You know, you thank him. It's, it's his ministry. He's the one that's giving you this. And uh, there's been so many times. Last summer, we, we, there was several times. We were feeding a lot of people last summer. Um, get the word got around and, and feed, feed no, That's Russian. Um, uh, we could see how God really was working and people were needing food at that time. And, and so the word got around like it does in, in Odessa. It's called a big village because the word gets around really fast. And, you know, they're passing out food here. And so people would come. And we were passing a lot of food. And, and it got to the point we didn't have enough. We come to a place and... Sorry, we, we, we only have this amount. We could feed this many people, and it was not enough. And so we'd say, God. And there's one distinct time I said, Sasha and I said, boy, it would be nice to have 20 more portions. If we had 20 more, and, and we'd be able to cover the, the people that, that were left over, just 20 more. And said, let's pray about it. And that was, that was the evening. The next morning, we get a call from the kitchen that were, was giving us food. They said, could you use 20 more portions? <laughs> I, they didn't know. I was going to say, who told you? <laughs> but we knew. God Amen. told them. Amen. And that was a, just another way that God was telling Sasha and I, you just, you just keep going. You just keep, keep doing what I've given you to do, and I'll take care of it. Praise and it went 20, and then we said, you know, it would be nice to have a, 110. I mean, we had at that time 75, so that's like 35 more portions, and Lord gave 35 more portions, and then there was, boy, it would nice, be nice to have 150. Boy, we could feed a lot more people, 150. Lord gave us 150. And we thought, you know, it's kind of, maybe we shouldn't, but it sure would be nice to have 175. <laughs> <laughs> and they called and said, there's another company that was, we were given it to, and they've stopped. Could you take theirs? And that came to 175. Only God can do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. God is so good, and he's doing, he's doing things like that all the time. Just to let you know, hey, I'm here, I see what's going on, and I'm with you. Amen. And boy, is that reassuring. And uh, Lord and I, we kind of we joke around a little bit, because many times uh, he'll, he'll say, aren't you glad you stayed? <laughs> and I say, yeah, I sure am. Because I'd never see what I see right now going on if I would have left. And uh, he just keeps reminding me, just, just keep trusting me. And uh, you'll, you'll, still, you'll still see what I, what I can do. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see what God's going to do because there's, so, there's such a need, um, brothers and sisters. There's such a need. Um, souls that need to be saved. Uh, people that are so hungry. People that have seen, seen a lie and they've been taught lies and... In, in their culture and their in their customs and they're seeing that it's all it's it's false it's not it's not what God says and and uh, just seeing people 
just getting a hunger for God's word and wanting to read God's word. And now we go to these this, the spots and it's not, okay, listen to us first and then you can get the food later. It's, it's now we have people coming just to hear the word being preached and they leave and they say, hey, don't you want something to eat? Nope. Didn't need anything to eat. I just wanted to come and listen, <laughs> listen to what you wanted to say again today. I Amen. said, praise the Lord. Um, God's doing a great work. And so continue to pray um, for what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, now with what's happened to Israel yesterday, um, that could be a decoy to get uh, things, the, um, how would you say that, the attention away um, Putin is really good at that, and he's, uh, that's kind of what his tactic is, to try to draw attention somewhere else so he can do something here without a lot of things happening. So be in prayer, be in prayer. The, uh, he's very, um, he's kind of changed his tactics. It's not now trying to hit military places. It's now hitting just sporadic. Um, in the last week, we've, we've seen a lot of, uh, just, just to give you an idea, um, there's up in North it's called Kharkov. It's a big city. Um, they were out, out in a graveyard having a military funeral, and they sent a rocket there, killed 50 people. Um, they're just their their tactics now is just to, to cause chaos and to kill as many people as they can. And so pray, pray for God to continue to work. Um, the war has brought a lot of good things, but there's a lot of bad things happening. And um, so pray, God would be God would be glorified continue to use us, continue to protect our people. Yeah. I mean, there's, just to tell you some stories about our, our, we have three men from our church that are in the military. They're serving on the front lines. Um, one is, I mean, it's called the zero line. I mean, he's, he's driving to get the wounded and the, and the dead off the, off the field. I mean, that's his job. And um, he's, he's shared many, many ways how God has protected them. Just this last month, he said, I was going down a road and I was supposed to take a right turn and then bring some, he says, I have had a, a like a, um, like a, what do you call that um, in English? A, it goes behind a, behind a car. Um, trailer. trailer, thank you. He had a trailer full of, of uh, some military equipment, and he was bringing it to another base. That was another, that was his job, and he was going down a hill, and was supposed to take a right and then just a little ways in that base. And he says, as he was going down the hill, his, his uh, commander said, stop. He said, why? He said, stop, and you'll, <laughs> you'll find out. And they, they said that they saw drones coming, and he was supposed to turn and go, and he stopped here, and, and just the time that he should have been right there is, is they hit a rocket hit, and it would have killed him instantly. And he said, thank you, Lord. And then he backed up and, the, and, and he went another way. And, and he said, that was just one of many ways how God has, has saved my life, um, yeah. just a, a miraculously. He said one other time, he says, we're out in a field. And he says, I'm with this battalion. And uh, they said, hit the dirt. There's rockets coming in. And he said, 100 yards that way, one hit and exploded. And they, it, I mean, it's, I mean, when they explode, I mean, the ground shakes. And he said, 100 yards that way. And they, everybody said, hit the deck because one's coming right at us. And they went down, and the rocket hit and stuck in the ground. It should have killed everybody, but it just stuck in the ground. And he says, Pastor, I was praying the whole time. <laughs> I said, keep praying, brother. Keep praying. But that's how God is just doing miraculous things. We're hearing stories like this all the time. One soldier, he said, uh, there were some Russians that, that, that surrendered. And when they got there, they said, there's only you? They said, we thought there was a, 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 a large amount of people here. And we thought we were, were dead ducks, and so we surrendered. You know, it's just us. <laughs> what did they see? We have no idea. But God can do things like that. And just miraculously, how God is just protecting, uh, showing, his, showing his... What's that? Oh, the ferry. Yeah, that was, that was just, that was, that was just this, this week. Um, the, the ferry that I usually take to come back to America is we go there and then I drive to Bucharest and um, it was hit a week ago and so we people are still going that way but I, I just Lord says go through Kishinev, Moldova it's a different way and I, I don't really like going that because you have to go into Moldova and a lot of times they have 
they check your luggage and they and they try to find something and they cause problems and I didn't I usually don't want to go that way but it's go through Kishinoff and I said okay and so I went through Kishinoff well that night when I should have been at that ferry a rocket hit you say, well, that's just coincidence. No, that's not, I don't think that's coincidence. I think God is just saying, hey, just, just trust me here. I know what I'm doing. I know what's going to happen. And uh, so God is just, just doing a lot of great, great things. And so pray. Uh, pray for us. Pray for as we go back. Um, there's a lot, of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of ministry that we see that's um, uh, difficult ministry ahead of us with uh, PTSD, if you've heard. Um, that, with people that are involved with military and, and rocketing and stuff. And um, um, I, sometimes I even ha- myself, um, just because of what we've been through, uh, there's different sounds. And, and, and if we're around each other, and you'll, you'll see, because if there's a sound that sounds, it, it, you kind of, kind of freeze for a second, and then, okay. It's, it's nothing. Just keep going. But that's part of it. And that's, uh, we're going to have to deal with, with that. And, and we just found out there's a, a Kevin, uh, Kevin Robb, and we're going to try to find out, we're, we're trying to find materials because we see that that, that is a, a great need. It's going to be in the near future to, to minister to people and a good outreach because there's so many people in need of that right now. And so pray, pray for us about that. Um, pray for God's protection as we go back now with, with uh, Israel and in the Arab countries in Turkey, uh, not really sure what they're, what they're uh, into. We fly through Turkey on the way back, and so we pray that uh, God would, uh, would protect us and get us back to Odessa. We're planning on leaving, on the, leaving here on the 19th, the 20th out of really early in the morning, 20th uh, out of Minneapolis, and then fly into Turkey, and then to Kishinev, and then a six-hour bus ride to Odessa. And so pray, pray that God would protect us as we go back. Um, Lydia and Hannah will be going back with me. Um, we believe this is what the Lord is wanting us to do, um, and them to be with me and to be back there. And so, pray with us. People are saying, "Well, you're you're crazy, and we don't understand." And but I said, "You just trust, keep trusting God like we are, and, and just he, I know He He has something. Uh, it's something I know He's going to use us for His glory, and uh, we may not know exactly what, uh, but in life or death, we know in His will is the best way to be. Amen. And uh, to be where He wants us to be, and to be doing what He wants us to do." And so pray, pray with us about that and uh, that God would protect us, uh, use us, continue to use us, and that uh, we would not get in the way and not try to do something on our own, but just to keep following his lead sure. and uh, do what he wants us to do. Um, I believe for right now, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, maybe you have any, any questions tonight, maybe about the Ukraine, about the ministry there. Um, it's... Uh, it's a blessing to be here. Okay, all right. Keep praying. Keep praying. And uh, if you if you'd like to take part, um, the, the, the bank, I guess the greatest need right now is the, is the printing ministry. Uh, that has grown to to the amount that we're we're having to. It's it's a big. I mean, we're at an average right now about fifty sixty thousand a month we're printing, um, and that's that's like a a, a minimum. Uh, sometimes it goes into the you know, 100,000, and it depends on the orders. Uh, when things get low, we make another order, and, and uh, that seems to be, wow, Roman, we need this track and this track and that book, and, the, and things are just, it's on a weekly, a weekly thing now. We're printing more and more, and because of that cost, um, the cost, just to be frank with you, we're about $7,000 uh, a, a month right now in printing ministry, in printing tracks. Um, it, sometimes if we get bigger orders, uh, it can go up, but usually that's the kind of what we've been around at right now, and, uh, and so God has provided so far, and I know He will in the future. Um, just this morning, uh, Brother Frank, he, uh, Frank, Brother Fred said that uh, he said we've been praying and wanted to be a help and didn't know how, but this is an, this is you've told us now, and uh, be assured we're going to ha- be helping more in the printing ministry. So that's been a blessing, and so uh, I know God's going to take care of it. And uh, so that's just wanted to let you know that um, physically, physically be praying for our physical health because of on the go all the time. Um, just physically, there's a lot of viruses going on now over there, sicknesses, colds, and so that we'd stay healthy because um, there's only two that can drive the van, myself and Alexander. And when I'm here, that means he has to be driving every day. 
uh, for the two weeks. And so be in prayer for him. I told him it's kind of, we're trying to, we're kind of leveling out because he was, he's been down for almost a month with his surgeries. And so I've been going every day for this month. And I said, we're just trying to level this out a little bit. <laughs> You're going to cover me now for two weeks. But uh, be in prayer for him and uh, his family. His wife and daughter are not saved. And we've been really praying for his wife. Um, something happened that she uh, saw or was in part of a church. And, and so she thinks everybody's like that. And it's just going to take some time um, for her and her, her, her life and, her, and his daughter. But, uh, boy, he has just, uh, he has just, um, just got a love for the Lord. Uh, I told him I can't, get, I can't shut him up. Uh, and what I mean by that, it's, it's a good thing, is before the war, he, wouldn't, he, would, he would just come to the service and he'd listen. Sometimes he'd ask questions, but you could tell, boy, he was, he's, he was taking everything in. And he even says, he says, before the war, I was comfortable because I was taking all of this in. And now it's just like the Lord's told me, now it's time to pass out. I mean, to let it out. And, and uh, so we, when we go to these places, usually, he, he, you know, pastor, you preach. And, and then uh, if you need me, you just, you know, tell me. If, and, and now it's, you know, I'll start and he continues and then I'll finish. <laughs> and so we work as a tag team right now. And it's, it's neat to see him just getting involved, wanting to tell people and then his desire. And now he has two weeks on his own. So he's like, wow, I get every night. <laughs> and so uh, be in prayer. Be in prayer for him. He's, uh, he's been a real a, a blessing. Loves the Lord. Wants to serve the Lord. And, um, but it's, it's been good. It's been good. If, uh, if you have any questions later, feel free to, free to ask. Uh, continue, continue to to pray as we're here. Um, personally, um, personally, that, that I would just follow God's leading. And um, just there's a lot of things we could do and a lot of things that others are doing that are good, and I'm not docking all of that. But, and, uh, but I've, I've come to, to, uh, to learn that you, you need to do what God wants you to do. Um, he'll, he'll tell others to do other things, but you need to do what he wants you to do and, um, and not be like others and not do like others. You just do what I want, and that's what I want from you. <laughs> and uh, so that's what we're doing. And just pray, pray for us. Uh, God would continue to, to uh, guide me um, with the printing ministry, the Meals on Wheels, and the church. Um, we could, uh, right now we could really use a youth minister, uh, a, a youth pastor working with the young people. We're getting a lot more young people coming in, and it's, it, we could use that. And so we're praying for somebody that could work with the young people, children's ministries. Um, our church, you could say, is, is a new, new plant because everybody is new from within the last year and a half. Uh, and they've been saved and they've been coming. A lot of unsaved coming still, um, but it's, it's, everybody's new. And so there's not really a lot of uh, workers that we can say, okay, you take this Sunday school, you take that teen group, and it's, okay, how are we going to, how are we going to, okay, everybody's going to be together. And then we're going to, and the age groups are, are now like children's. If you can, you can imagine, it's like kids from like 6 to 16. And, and, that's, and the teacher's trying to help, you know, the kids and, the, and them. And it's, it's difficult. So be in prayer. I know Lydia's going to be helping with that when she goes back. But uh, be, in, be in prayer for our God to, to raise up some more people. And help, help me to be able to train more people for the ministry. And, um, and that God would be, be glorified through this. Um, I told you that we're, we're, uh, the war is continuing to go on. You may not hear a lot about it, but it's, it's a daily basis. Uh, sirens are going off. Um, what that means is that rockets are coming your way. You have no idea where they're going to land. And so you take cover if, you, if there's a place to take cover. If you don't, you say, Lord, here we go. <laughs> and we keep doing what we've been doing. And so be, be in prayer. Um, they've been more, more hitting Odessa with drones uh, usually at night, um, because drones, you can't see them very well. And so they're thinking they can get them through. But the Lord has also blessed our air defense. They've been shooting them, uh, most of them, out of the sky. A um, lot of the soldiers, um, you'll hear, doo -doo 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 -doo. that's a machine gun. And you hear, boom, 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 that's a little bigger gun. And then you hear the rockets. And then they hear the explosions. And then if they're all in the air, that's a good thing. That means they've shot them down, and they, you know, they land. Sometimes they'll cause fires, but that's, they're, they're getting them before they hit the ground. But then you get those that you see a big cloud. You see the big 
booms, that means one got through. And usually the ones getting through right now are the supersonics. Uh, they, they fly lower and they go a lot faster. And our air defense are having a hard time picking them up. And a lot of them are getting through. And they're the ones causing the big, like you, you've seen in the news uh, or in some of our updates where like buildings and there's like half of the building is, is gone. That, that's the supersonic rockets. They're, they're, they go super fast and they do a lot of damage. And, uh, and so be in prayer, be in prayer that uh, God would continue to protect us. And um, um, things get, get tight at some times. Um, you get on your knees and say, Lord, help us get through this. And uh, he does. And uh, we continue to go on the next day doing what he's want us, wanting us to do. And so um, we need your prayers. Amen. Okay? All right. No questions? Open your Bibles, please. Um, preacher, what time do you usually get done on? No time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, preacher. <laughs> Terry will turn the lights off tonight. <laughs> Amen. Well, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. I won't keep you long. Um, that's usually a joke over in Ukraine. They say, oh, okay, that's just a half hour one usually. <laughs> but no, I really um, just want to be a help to you, something that has helped us, helped myself personally. Um, Paul told the Ephesian church uh, here in, in Ephesians chapter 6 about a spiritual warfare, him sitting in a dungeon a prison, looking at a Roman soldier, looking at his his armor, and then identifying that with the spiritual warfare. And, uh, and the main thing, as we see in verse 11, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. To stand. To stand. Also, we see this also in verse 13. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, Having done all to what? Stand. To stand. To stand. Not to run, but to stand. Not to run forward, but to stand. To stand. And what we need, I believe in our time, is for Christians to stand. To stand for something. Sure. To stand on the Word of God. Amen. To stand for their, their testimony as a child of God. To stand as a holy with the Lord's help, a holy vessel, to present ourselves a holy vessel, to be holy, to stand for what is right, to stand for what is holy, to stand for the truth. And in order to stand, Paul was looking at the soldiers, and, and as the, a soldier, um, as I read this, um, it reminds me, I also want to tell everybody thank you for your prayers and those that have sent love offerings that we've been able to help a lot of soldiers. Um, war brings the good and the bad out of a lot of things, but it's, it's also showed us a lot of corruption, uh, not just in Ukraine, but in the world as a whole, of how much corruption there is and how they use war uh, to do a lot of that. And um, for instance, there's soldiers that we now have come contact with. They know us. We know them. They called and they said, hey, can you help us with some it's, it's called like a first aid kit. And they said, we, we need some, some aids, aid kits. We don't have any. And I said, well, that's strange. I just talked with another guy. And he said, Ukraine just received over a million aid kits. And, and they said that that's for all the soldiers. And they have enough, possibly, that every soldier would have at least two. I said, well, that's strange. Why, why don't you have? They said, that's probably staying up there somewhere or it's being sold. But it doesn't get down to us. And I said, well, that makes sense. It shouldn't, but it, that makes sense. And so we are able to help them with, with, uh, with these first aid kits. Uh, sometimes that they called, and like our, our leg that's out in the front lines, he said, Pastor, uh, my, my boots are all worn out, and they, they have lowered our, lowered our, pit, our uh, salaries, and um, I, I could use some military boots uh, to help me out this, this winter. Um, I said, well, yeah, we, we'll help. And I went before the church, and I said, church, the leg, he just called, and he said he's needing some boots. So I said, is, is there anybody that would like to help? And we'll, we'll, we'll gather a, 
some money for them and, and to be able to buy them and, and you know, hand went up and hand went up and I'll help and they'll help and they, praise the Lord, they gathered it and we were able to buy them, buy them some boots. Uh, but that, that, is, that is so important for a soldier to be equipped and to be fully equipped. Um, it's sad, but there's some soldiers that don't have good helmets and um, some have, have, they use any kind of helmet that they can find, but there's, there's, <laughs> they don't stop bullets and they need those that stop bullets. And they, there's just a lot of, lot of them that are not fully equipped and they understand that they're in harm's way. And they're not, they're, not, uh, they're not content with that. They're, they're asking people. They're saying, hey, we need this, we need that. We, we need to be equipped uh, for, for us to be able to defend, to be able to stand. Amen? Right. To be able to stand, we need to be equipped to be able to stand. Right. And uh, when, I, when they say that,